So we're in May. We are. May Day. It's May Day. It's May Day. May Day. Cinco de Mayo. Hey. hey. Let's give away some fucking shirts this Let, time. Let's do oh it. Oh, my goodness. Let's yep. do that. Check this out. Enroll in one of our two top most awesome bundles. We have the RGB bundle. That's MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, or the MAPS Super Bundle, which is all of that plus MAPS Prime, Prime. and MAPS Anywhere. Enroll in one of those two, and you get... Two T-shirts of your choice for, for under, under a dollar. Under one dollar total. That's or it. Holy free holy. Yeah. Yep. Two shirts for under a dollar for enrolling in one of those bundles. You go to mindpumpmedia.com. Doug, how will it work? They'll send a, they'll get an email. How's that going to work? Yeah. When you buy the bundle, you're going to get an email. It's going to give you all the instructions to access the shirts. We do have to sell it for a few pennies simply because the system won't support it otherwise. And we have an inventory nightmare. But uh, yeah, less than a dollar. So for two, two, so for, two, two yeah. shirts under a buck. It'll be your choice of shirts too. So we have all the maps shirts. We got the mind pump lift responsibly shirts going on. We got all kinds of cool stuff on there. So cool. Just go to mindpumpmedia.com. Check go get your gear. All right, t-shirts. Oh. Let's do some t-shirts. How are our reviews going? How many reviews, Doug? 19 reviews. See? Do you know why? Oh, it up. I told you why. Because Sal called for them. It's not calling for them. It's no, just, you just explained it. It's explaining it because yeah. leaving a review is a blister on your asshole. It's very yeah. difficult. Well, we just got a Could email. you call for some money then, motherfucker, then? <laughs> so call for something that actually puts some fucking dollars Thank in you, our Adam. Bank account. Yeah, use your powers for the, okay, good. Okay, here's how you leave a review. Great. <laughs> here's how you leave a review. You go to mindpumpmedia.com and roll in a map super bundle. <laughs> <laughs> It's real easy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, no, if you got, I, you go on the iTunes uh, podcast app, search Mind Pump. Even if you're subscribed, you have to search for us in order to leave a review. We pop up, click on the icon, then you'll see a little section where you can leave a review. And the, the odds of winning a free t-shirt are actually pretty high. Mm-hmm. How many we got, Doug? We got five. And Damn. they are Carl Mann, Mr. Champagne, Lifting Leo 24, no bro split, just strength. <laughs> no bro split. And yeah. Castronova. That's right. I like it. How do they get their shirts done? Yeah, just send the name I just read off to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right over to you. Thank you, everybody. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Get on, Justin. Okay. Put the phone down, Justin. We're all unplugging. I can't wait till we're so rich that Doug can just sit up there and just like drink a glass of scotch and like fucking have a good time up there. Be like, all right, guys, it's time. It's time to start this shit. Pour me another double double malt over there, well, Justin. I, I want to get so rich that he's drinking like baby seal blood or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby some, seal blood. Tasty. Some endangered species. <laughs> get him like you know, eggs. You know what I mean? Ten thousand dollars sunglasses like, for no whoa. reason. Like, what are you eating over there? You're like, oh, this is a uh, this is a panda meat. Panda meat. Yeah, it's mm. really good. That's what I'm gonna yeah. do. When we're we from China, we're gonna buy him some badass Exported. like Paul Schaefer type glasses, but his own style, like That's that a, are like right? fucking like chrome hearts, dude. Those are like three thousand dollars sunglasses. I'm gonna get you chrome uh, hearts. Yeah, I just, look forward to Adam. Just, Adam, just, Adam fucking hard. Adam, bro, I, I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna buy everybody. <laughs> he needs leather pants. Useless, expensive shit. You've talked about this so many times. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna He's buy the you guy that. that owned <laughs> sharks yeah. for real, yeah. dude. I'm not gonna buy that for you. <laughs> you said you were gonna buy me. It would be a waste. You said you'd buy me a giraffe. I feel like if I gave it to. Remember you said giraffe. <laughs> you, imagine, you imagine you show up to your house yeah. and your buddy bought you a giraffe in your backyard. In your, like, wow, <laughs> you have really tall trees. Like, yeah. You're like, what the fuck do I do now? Yeah, I got a giraffe. My, my giraffe. <laughs> you know why a prank like that's so hungry. funny? Because you'd be like, it's almost more of a hassle to get rid of it, that's right? A, <laughs> you'd be like, yeah. fuck, a- dude, you son of a bitch. Like, do I really want to get rid yeah. of it, or do I just try and feed and walk this thing? What do I do with it? Do you walk it? Yeah, do you, why'd, wa- why'd you, do you buy it? Tons. Of do you walk a giraffe? Walk into my house as a lion yeah. <laughs> in a cage in the middle of the living room. What happy, the fuck? Happy birthday, oh, man. dude! So, um, I can see that. We can. I know. You, I know you guys are. You guys are probably wondering why my hair looks so tight. Oh, it's so and clean. nice and tight. yeah. What happened? Short, what happened, my friend? Is that one of those mistakes where they? Oops, uh, that was a little bit shorter than we. No, expected. so I went to. Uh, so my son needed. A haircut, I like it, and he's is it short doesn't look bad. I don't give a fuck. Here's the deal. I I realized something a while ago. I used to go to an expensive stylist, good friend of mine by the way, and he's a fucking amazing. He does an amazing job, but my hair is so basic, and I am. I mean, and let's be honest, I really don't care anyway. Uh, but and he, and it was expensive. Your haircut so, says that. Yeah, who way. cares? So then I went to the twenty dollar barber, and he cut it, and it wasn't as good, but it was good enough, right? So I'm like, fuck it, I'm just gonna pay. You know, I'm just gonna go to supercuts from now. Who cares, right? 
So with my son yesterday, he needed a haircut. And uh, if you guys recall, when you guys were kids, you know, Adam, this is, I know something you remember. You know, our kid, we had a lot of hair and it grew really fast, right? <laughs> so you have fond memories over it. Remember that? Yeah. So, uh, our, you know, your hair grows fast when you're a little boy, yeah, right? Yeah. And so my son's got like this mop head. So I'm like, all right, let's go get a haircut. And uh, the barber was closed yesterday. So I'm like, where am I going to go? And then I remember there was a place called Sport Clips oh, or Sports. Man. I think it's called yeah, yeah, Sport, Sport Clips. Clips. Sport Clips. Have you been there? Yeah. Okay. It's so, little, like lockers and you're looking at TVs. The most, yeah. Sports. I it's love the it. most like sexist towards men thing I've ever been in my entire life. It's a brilliant, it's a brilliant <laughs> business model. Actually, it was, it was, had just was started like a year before when I was creating, I was writing a business plan for a hair salon called Top Off. And, uh, they were our number one, like competitor. If you were to, if I was going to say I had a competitor. But dude, so I go in there and this is what they do. They, tr- they're obviously trying to attract men, right? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know, it's a place for guys or whatever. So you go in there and they just try too hard. They have seating so that it looks like you're at an, a sporting event, mm. and there's like a big screen TV with sports on, and it's like all this sport memorabilia, and it's like they try they try really hard to attract like men because apparently all men like sports, right? Except for me. <laughs> and then just immediately made you uncomfortable. But not a yeah. single male barber. It's all like if you went to Supercuts, it's all. Uh, Vietnamese women cutting your hair, just yeah. like at Supercuts. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Then nobody speaks really good English, and you go, and they're great. You know, they do the thing, but there's no difference between this and Supercut, except it says sports everywhere. No. Stupid, Br- brilliant marketing. It's Br- not because it's, it's fucking it's, yeah. way it's, more. It's more expensive. No, it's fucking saying. brilliant, is what well, it is. They are huge. Are they, you need to go to the hipster ones where they have they all have like crazy stylized beards and their eyebrows and their hair's all like ridiculous. Like I saw one of those when I was down in San Luis Obispo and they give you the straight razor and they do like the hot um hot wax and they pull out your nose hairs with the hot wax oh. and all kinds of shit. It's dude, I'll tell it's you something. Awesome. There is a huge need in the market for this, especially where we're at. Say Silicon Valley and San Francisco yeah, has I think one. it should be a real barbershop though. Yeah, so yeah, this is like this is what, this is what we had designed, right? So this was actually we were trying to be okay, <clears throat> sports clips is kind of like what I would call like the hooters of haircut, right? That's what they are. And we were trying to be like more of the upscale version of that. So, you know, I, my goal was to get a very like, you know, manly man, but to do kind of metrosexual things. And so, you know, right now, like if you're a guy and you go get your nails done and you get your hair done, like by actual salon, or if you get like lined up with your beard, it's kind of on this like metrosexual side. But dude, there's nothing wrong with keeping your hair lined tight, with cleaning all your shit up, like. I, there's nothing like feminine about that. Like it's just taking care of yourself. And for a long time, that we've really as we've really made fun of men for doing that. And you've seen this pendulum swinging. And there's a huge market for uh, appealing to this type of a guy. So the business plan that we had I had written back in 2000 and <clears throat> about eight or nine was called Top Off, and the concept was. You would walk into this place and, you know, so imagine sports clips without all the sports bullshit, but like a real high end look. So we had it designed to where like the floors are like this kind of like garage, like laminated, like concrete type floors. And then the sides of the walls were uh, that sheet metal look along the outside. And then each one of the salon, each one of the stations were uh, the where the girls would keep all their stuff. It would be uh, the red toolboxes like you would have like in a garage, like the red toolbox, you know, where the drawers are. Sure. All the women would wear uh, cut off jean shorts <laughs> and then they would have their the where they'd keep their all their scissors, tools, everything would be in a tool belt look like a leather tool belt that they wear on. So mm-hmm. they have like this whole construction. And they would just wear pasties. Well, no, the top they're actually the tops I had designed were like these cute bikini tops that said top off. But it was very classy. Like so the idea was to very classy. <laughs> Super you, classy. Oh, it was. It wasn't it's it doesn't maybe it doesn't sound like it the way you're envisioning it, the way it was drawn up and the amount of money that we had. I mean, it was going to be a quarter million dollars just for the build out uh, for all this. So it wasn't going to be chintzy at all. I don't know. I just gonna well, this out. was during the era too with the um, that one coffee shop that like had the that was like sort of their gimmick, right? That that opened girls up. Girls in bikinis. Yeah, the girls in bikinis. Did they get in trouble hot though? Hot. No, there's like sixty of those here in San Jose. Yeah, but didn't yeah, a bunch no, of them get shut exploded. down? No, I thought some got shut down because it was like. <clears throat> They try to like stuff. No, nah, there's, there's it, it, behind the scenes. That's a whole nother business and, yeah. and market. I would want, I would want one more like, like we saw over there with the the cig- cigar 
bar kind yeah. of feel. So it's like so it's like a gentleman's club where so it's got like you know. But that I mean, there's room for that too. Obviously, I'm I'm just saying that like for me personally, like I keep looking for a barber shop that's like. You know, it's like it's like a it's like a gentleman's club. You know, so you go in and you, you smell all those kind of mahogany's wood. Yes, you know. Yeah, yes. I see a huge. That's, you could smoke a cigar. Uh, like you so that's think, of, think of that. Think of a blend of what you're probably envisioning that I'm saying right now with a like real high end cigar lounge, like that type of feels so very masculine. Yeah, and manly, but then very high end, and they would do everything. You could do lining your beard up. Can do they? You get your scalp massage, all kinds of. I'm and all then, for it. Dude. Yeah, you'd have to, and it'd be real, it'd be high price so this would not be like trying to compete with sports clips those are the only people that were doing something that was appealing to the similar market as i was but i also wanted to capture i wanted to capture the metrosexuals and this and the guys that are like manly manly men would actually come into these places because and the, the only appeal that would be like sports clips is the still you would have the hairstylist be good looking women that would be cutting hair but they they couldn't just be a uh, you know what you gonna call it? Yeah, they got to do a good job because exactly when I went, it has to be. Dude, when I went to like it was sports clips or it was like a, the other one, super cuts. I walked out of there and I was like feeling my head. I, they gave me like a yarmulke, <laughs> like the back of my I had this huge patch that was like Terrible. on the very like on my cowlick. You know, the, and, like, I was like, what in the fuck? Like I, I was like, do I go back in there? Like, well, your hair. Just, like, how do they fuck off. your hair up? Yours is easy. I know. You get it real short and just like, keep it short, man. Just a little <laughs> nice and tight and faded. And it's a done deal. Yeah. What'd you guys do this weekend? I went to um, the weekend. That was actually a, you went to what? The, you went to the weekend. Yeah, he was in the weekend. Yeah, it was like three he's, levels of weekend. He's an he's an artist. Oh, okay. Yeah, he yeah. sings music. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Fucking rad concert, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably, uh, probably cracked top what five. Style? I don't know who that is. You don't know who the weekend is. Mm-hmm. You do actually. So it's Starboy tour. The Starboy. Yeah, I don't song. know the weekend. He makes fun of me. You don't know the weekend. He's like, oh no, no, it's okay, Justin. No, listen, I'll call, I'll <laughs> yeah. take you through. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a dick. Hey man. Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll play some of his music to you. But guys. what is it? What do you mean? What, what is kind it? of music? What uh, genre? Yeah, R and B, uh, rap, hip hop. He's kind of what makes him a little bit more unique mm. than mostly just regular guys is he can actually fucking sing too. So he can rap and he can sing. He does a lot of stuff. He just uh, yeah, I think he had G Easy come up on his last tour. He did some stuff with um, uh, he did a, a song with Kendrick Lamar. He's probably one of your the last two albums he's put out is some of the best uh, pop. R and B type music that's out there right now on the radio. Nice. So he's a, he's a big deal right now. So I know you guys don't follow that that genre at all, but nice. yeah, good shit though. Really good stuff, and it was probably one of the better performances I've seen. Uh, and I've seen quite a few concerts, so it was it was top notch. I was actually really impressed with it. Mm. Um, I did that, and I did something else. Well, you know what's interesting along those lines? I was watching Netflix, um, and my wife was gone this whole weekend, so I just did a shit ton of stuff. We'll get to that, but. Um, this one documentary about design and there was um, there was this lady trying Des something or other, but she was a set designer and, and um, she's done everything from U2 to uh, Beyonce, Jay-Z, and she creates like all of that stuff that you go to watch at the concerts, oh, yeah. like how you visually see like these glowing uh, boxes and like remember when we were at U2 how cool that was like how they had this like catwalk and then you walked through uh, the lights and then the lights like told the story the whole thing through that so she designs all that kind of stuff cool. and like explain her process with all that and then like dude she's so out of the box thinking if you watch I highly recommend it it just it was like blowing my mind like how um, you know, she comes up with these ideas and they're all like six. So. Yeah. I love, see, I, I enjoy shows. I mean, God, you went to you too, which is in my, if not in my opinion, a lot of people's opinion that's been to a lot of concerts is the best, it is one of the best concert you could yeah. ever go to. I mean, they're, they're just a spectacle in itself. Like, I'm not even a YouTube fan. Like I don't listen to YouTube music, right? but Me they're, either. uh, so like my, you know, Bruce, who's the connection I have with, uh, the SAP center, He's seen hundreds of concerts. I've probably seen a hundred myself, maybe a little more. And U2 is, it's like all these concerts, like we, the weekend was awesome. Probably in my top five, maybe at least top 10 for sure. He, then there's U2. It's in their, they're, they're, they're in their own class of their own. Like they, nobody is, comes close to them. Like, uh, 
they the, the and that's because of the performance they put on and like the level that they are they come in with all their own stuff and they take over the entire stadium you could literally be somebody who is deaf and you could fucking enjoy the show mm. and you know because it's it's such a visual mm-hmm. pers- you know it's off the charts i mean if that i tell people all the time like go see that even if you're not even a fan of the music yeah because they put on such an amazing show yeah, that's awesome. You also you went to Santa. You went to the boardwalk, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah you yeah. did some video well, stories. Boy, there. Was that crazy or what? Down dude, there, there was the so many people. Dude, there. Uh, eighty degrees like, oh, and on the my god, god. I bet. dude. Because the weather was just fantastic, and I I honestly avoid it at all costs, especially when it's like that nice. Because I know it's going to be ridiculous and crowded. Um, and uh, so my wife had left for like a couple days for this weekend. She went to go visit somebody actually in Idaho near Spokane. And, uh, and so I was just like, I got to get out of the house. I got to do stuff, you know, constantly. So I, I took them all over the place, but then, you know, they're like, they always want to go to the boardwalk. Courtney hates being around crowds of people, so she'll never go. So <laughs> I'm always the guy that they're like, dad, it's our time. You know, let's go to the boardwalk. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so I just was like, you know what? Let's go hard. Let's like do it like, and do it 100%. And so we got like, you know, the unlimited rides, like all three of us. And like, we're just hopping left, the right, all these different rides. It, every ride we could get on, we got on. <laughs> and uh, they convinced me, I I ate ahead of time, uh, like a healthy meal beforehand too. Cause I was like, I don't want to eat any of their shit they got there. It's like awful. <laughs> Funnel cake. Oh my like, God. It's, and you just feel like corn dogs, are, like, corn dogs are the healthiest thing they have there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> corn dog on a stick. So that, awful, that was though. the deal. I was like, okay, we got to eat first. And then we'll go, and it was so hot. All I ended up buying there was water, and uh, and they really, really want to get their face painted. And I was just like, really? You want to do that? Like, get your face painted? I was like, all right. You know, they're not asking me for ice cream or anything. They're just like, I really want to get my face painted. So my oldest, he gets his face painted like this scary, like, Day of the Dead, like, <laughs> like skull, right? He's he's seven years old. My youngest, he of course, he does, like, this Batman, you know, cool Batman uh sign on his face it was like really cool but uh my oldest <laughs> he's so funny because he owns this like this this skull face he's walking around he starts like in, trying to intimidate people you know he's like looking and staring them down and stuff. <laughs> I'm like you gotta stop doing that and then he, we're in line and he's just like s- like kind of staring off and this little girl like from the distance kind of looks over and she's like hey like like hugs her mom you know and he looks over and then he sees that she's like pointing at him and looking at him and then so he's just like staring at her you know like really creepy he's like look at her and I'm like <laughs> I'm like I'm like hitting him like you're scaring her <laughs> look straight ahead but on the know? inside you're like that's uh, not but I was dying yeah, it was funny it was too. so funny because he was owning it you know he's walking around all tough and like you know staring people down it's pretty oh, funny shit, that's dude. great man so we had right. a good time we went and uh, hiked uh, whatchamacallit um, San Antonio San Antonio Rancho is that a nice uh... actually that that was cool so <laughs> well yeah because the other one's a yeah hike, after after our and it, it's still a, you know it was warm outside and i got a little a little sweat going on there's enough of a climb that you you get a, you feel like you get a little bit of a mm-hmm. workout it was perfect but i could talk like so we brought my 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 best friend and his girl were up in town and we all this after the night of weekend where the gr- the girls got fucked up right so we take the girls all the sweet they drank till they was out of alcohol and they were all hung over. But they rallied up and said, hey, because we, we had planned, okay, after we all go out and have a good time, we're going to go do this hike the next day. So we all did. And <clears throat> I was a little skeptical after the experience with Mission Peak and how miserable that was that I was like, you know what, if we're going to do, you're going to get me to do this hike thing, which I'm not a huge fan of as it is. I want to be able to like enjoy the company of my friends. Like I'm gonna, I don't want to be like, <gasps> uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's not. I'm not into that right now. You know Especially when you're the fitness guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah you're, right. you're all dogging yeah, it. Yeah, 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 I know. And yeah. Uh, so this one was great. You know, this one I could, I could walk and we could talk. We had a good time. So that was definitely up my alley. Dude, sure. I that's got awesome. actually almost. I almost forgot to tell you guys this. So one of the great thing about young kids is that they're super honest, and it's it's can be. Oh yeah. It could be. It's hilarious. hilarious and uncomfortable and at the uncomfortable same time. yeah so uh, so my you know my girlfriend was uh, cooking uh, dinner for me and the kids uh, the other night and uh, we you know we eat uh, different than the way my kids will eat when they're with their mom or with their grandma because obviously their mom is you know she was born in Italy so she eats, she cooks very traditional Italian type foods and so does my mom and my girlfriend doesn't really cook that way. She's a very good cook in her own right, but it's different, right? 
and it's more around kind of like you know the keto lifestyle type of stuff right but when my kids are there she tries to kind of accommodate and my kids are can be well, kids in general are very difficult to please when you when you feed them everybody knows dinner time is one of the most difficult times mm-hmm. with children so mm-hmm. my girl went to the went to the grocery store and she's like i'm gonna buy a bunch of stuff because i'm gonna see if i can make something that the kids really want to eat and she knows the kids like pasta with pesto so she goes and buys uh pesto in the jar so she brings it back and she's like oh i got pesto i'm gonna make pasta with pesto and i see it and i already know like because they're used to the real deal i'm like i don't want to say anything you know what i mean <laughs> you can't give, I don't say, you can't give my italian yeah. kids fucking fake pasta i, I know pesto. i know already like i'm like okay yeah. let's see what happens right yeah so she makes pasta and, she puts, and yeah. she puts the, you know, pot and it's organic and all that stuff, but it's in a jar. It doesn't matter. Like my mom literally picks the fucking leaves from the yard, blends them in her own blender and yeah, adds really her own compete with that. everything fresh, right? From the garden yeah. <laughs> and right. Like literally that day you eat that pesto. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's just nothing in a jar can compare. So anyway, she makes it with, <laughs> with, the, with the pasta and uh, my daughter right away is just like, I'm not eating this. She just looks at it. I'm not eating it. I'm like, you got to try a little bit. And she takes it off. She's like, I don't want this. R- right at that moment, my mom FaceTimes me. So I'm talking to my mom. And my mom's like, hey, let me talk to the, to the kids right now. I'm like, okay. So she's talking to my daughter. And she's like, hey. She goes, hey, what are you guys eating for dinner? And I'm, I'm like, oh, uh, you know, we had pasta with pesto. And she goes, how did you like it? My daughter's like, it was terrible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Her exact, In front oh, of no. Jess? Is, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> her exact, thing. Her exact yeah. words. It uh, was terrible. Oh, and, my, and my mom's like, what do you mean it was terrible? She goes, it tastes like nothing. It was horrible. And then, and then, and then my daughter, I think, uh, you know, because she's very honest, yeah. uh, she's like, but the chicken was excellent. Like, she's trying to, like, be cool, you know? And, and, and it, was, it was. She did eat all her chicken. Yeah. Trying but yeah. to soften it a little. But after that, and I was fucking dying, dude. I was, uh, I was cracking up the whole time because you can't get mad at a kid for being honest. I know. She's not being mean. She's just being straight up. <laughs> but you could tell, like, Jess was like, fuck, man, I try so hard to make these, you know, to give them something that they want to eat. Right. And I'm trying to explain to her. I'm like, listen, I'm like, these kids were raised on, like, you know, sauce that, you know, my mom made, you know what I mean? From yeah. the yard. Like, yeah. like it's not, it's just not going to work. Like, yeah. just do your thing. Don't worry about it. She could tell she was <laughs> like, we'll go in a different Yeah, you could tell yeah. she's like, fuck, they're never going to like me. I'm like, no, it's different. No, they like your cookie yeah. for different things. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different, <laughs> different styles. But my yeah. daughter was like, it was terrible. Go a different road. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. No filter. There was no, yeah. there, that road. there was no like nice, like, well, it was different. Or how do you, when that, oh, when that comes man. out, is it like this, this, how does your gut feel like right afterwards? Do you feel, do you feel bad? So I give her a hug. Like yeah, come here. No, I I thought it was funny because it wasn't. She was. So did you laugh (laughs) so hard? (laughs) I was laughing so hard because she was just being honest. You did. It wasn't. She wasn't trying to be mean. No, of course not. Of course not. She was just trying to be honest. Like little kids. I remember when my when my who was it? Was it my son? I think my son when he was a little guy, and I went and woke him up in bed. I think he was like two, two and a half maybe, and I go to give him a kiss, and he looks at me and he goes. Your face smells because I guess I had bad breath in the morning. Whatever, <laughs> like kids are just honest, dude. Yeah, you can't get mad at them for being honest. Yeah, it's nice and raw. Bird, bring her on. Chimera Quaz. Today's Quaz is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. First up is Machi Dog. Yo, yo, yo. So what was your defining moment that changed your why with regards to lifting, nutrition, and working out? So changed what do you your- think they mean about, what do they think they, well, what do you think they mean with this question? The why? Like why you do these things or like what your motivation is behind them? Or? Yeah. I think this I, is an aha moment maybe. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, okay. So lifting, nutrition, working out, was there, was there, I mean, we talk a lot about how we were driven by insecurities at the very beginning, right? So mm-hmm. we all felt a certain way about ourselves. That's what motivated us to initially get to the gym and start lifting weights. What moment, was there a moment in our life that made us go like, it's no longer about that. It's about this. That's but, a good way. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way to put it. Right. Yeah. That's a good way. For me, there was a there was a couple of them. Uh, the first one <clears throat> was when I got into uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So when I first started lifting weights, it, beca- it was very uh, compulsive, and uh, as Adam said, 
I was driven by the fact that uh, I felt uh, insecure about the way I looked, uh, you know, inadequate, all those different things. So I lifted weights to get as big and as strong as possible because it was like my, it was like an identity that I was trying to create. Well, when I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, a lot of that weight and size didn't benefit me because I needed to learn the technique. And plus, I couldn't move super well. And so what I did was I replaced one, you know, addiction, if you will, for another. And I dedicated myself to jujitsu, which meant I kind of broke the chains of resistance training. Now, I still lifted weights, but my attachment to it became a little different because now I was training for performance. Now, at this point, it still wasn't what I would consider a healthy uh, relationship with exercise, but it was like a stepping stone. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like when we get those clients who are smokers and they quit smoking, so then they become addicted to cardio or, or lifting weights. Mm-hmm. And you, it's not that you, you didn't go from like smoking to like you have this great relationship to exercise. You're just replacing one addiction for the other. And hopefully you replace it with a better one as a stepping stone. Well, there's- and that's kind of what happened with jujitsu for me. Like I let my body get lighter. I didn't worry so much about being big because I, I noticed that I could do, do better in jujitsu with – uh, without getting super, super big. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was a bit of a, of a big moment for me with working out. Um, but it was later on that it really uh, changed for me. And I was, I hate to say this, but it wasn't by choice. It was by, I got forced. I got forced to reevaluate what nutrition and exercise meant for me because I had uh, just, it felt like out of nowhere. And of course, you know, mainly it felt out of nowhere because I ignored all the signs that my body was sending me. But uh, I, I got to a point where uh, I, I was just, no matter what I ate, I had horrible, uh, you know, st- stomach issues. Horrible. Like for me, it was uh, basically diarrhea, inflammation, uh, you know, heartburn. And Nothing like that to change your why, huh? W- well, absolutely. I mean, I mean, imagine this. Imagine losing... You know, here's a guy who, you know, I, I got to build muscle. I got to be strong, right? And just losing 12, 15 pounds, you know, over the course of a few weeks. And there's nothing you could do to stop it. Like, I'm eating what I thought was clean. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to the doctor. I'm still lifting weights. And now I'm trying to take supplements because I'm trying to make up for it. And I'm just losing weight. And it's just, I, I feel crappy. I look crappy. And it was a wake-up call. And, uh, I, at that point I had to really examine food from a completely different angle, different than just macros, calories and the like. I I really had to dig deeper. Luckily I worked with some people who were, uh, you know, very versed in food intolerances and things like inflammatory, you know, bowel issues, uh, you know, leaky gut syndrome and, I used to scoff at some of the stuff that they would teach and say, although I respected it for myself, I never would apply it. I had to, I was forced to kind of take their advice and watch and wait and allow my body to heal. And it took me over the course of a year to do so. And over that year, I really, I really started to um, value my health on a different level. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of, me really starting to train and exercise for what I consider the right reasons mm-hmm. uh, for myself, you know? I can think for me, like having a similar kind of of moment, but more from strictly a performance end. So performance end kind of mm-hmm. blending into more healthier practices and a more holistic approach is where I ended up. But um, just all those years of training and it was all geared around performance and um, it was listening to coaches and just, it was really more autopilot. So I lifted, I lifted to produce, I lifted to uh, promote whatever it was I was doing in the sport and the time. And I trusted the coaches a lot to kind of do the programming for me with that. And so what I was really focused on was discipline, mental discipline, um, having the the fortitude, having the ability to overcome things. And so that was the entire engine that I was running off of was to uh, have that sort of, I could, I could be a workhorse and I could work myself harder than everybody around me. 
And uh, that's all. That was my go-to throttle for everything that uh, defined me. So and you ignored like signals that your body's like, hey, this is too hard, too hard, or or like didn't even know what recovery the word meant. So um, I think um, once I started to understand, well, it, it really took me getting out out of that um, environment to assess that and understand that. Well, I'm not moving as much as I was. And so I found I had this like panic internally and I actually let myself go. And I got, you know, I got overweight in um, r- rapidly because that intensity, um, if it, it, it's at such a different end of the spectrum that like if you can't maintain that, you get depressed and then you don't, you're not motivated to go back and, and attack it right away. Like, oh, I'll get back to that. And then I'll get back to that. And then it just keeps getting further and further away from you. And, uh, you know, and it's, so it took me to, to understand myself further, like, and take, take more, um, reasonable steps towards it. And, and that, that's when I started to realize, I was like, wow, I still move great. I still have good conditioning. My body's changing, but I'm doing like half of what I was doing before. And then I started assessing that further. And then that brought me into mobility and then the mobility, I started just focusing more on the movement of, of what I was doing, the quality of the movements. And I just, I, I could see myself responding even more powerfully in these movements. And, and it was just, I was, it had, had this like sort of aha thing with that. Like, Hey, what if I did that like mid season and I planned this out a lot better and, Oh my God, I've been such a better athlete. So just hammering myself so hard. So there's uh there's levels to this shit. That's how I look at it. And I don't I don't I think I'm I will forever be defining my why. Um I think early on I I realized for me like I got into fitness honestly because I was really good in sales and it rec- and I put that together really early that uh sell this was selling yourself and I was communicating with people on a daily basis. And I kind of fell in love with it. And then I kind of convinced myself early on that what a cool job I get to do that the better I get at it, and the more I continue to improve, the better I get at selling health and fitness to others. So I was actually very driven uh, financially and the business side of it. I didn't have like, I didn't, I wasn't a kid who was like, even though I was into sports, I, I like I wasn't like Justin where I had connected those dots early on where I was like so into it. I didn't have somebody who was mentoring me and teaching me how to train my body correctly. I had bad coaches who had us doing terrible workouts to and so I didn't see any carryover into the basketball court or whatever sport I was playing at the time. So for me, when I got into it, I was in my twenties and it kind of fell on my lap. Like I remember just kind of getting into working out and being interested in that and then seeing a guy that was a personal trainer at the gym going, Oh, this would be kind of a cool job to do while I went to school and that's how it started. And I instantly fell in love with it. And why I fell in love with it, I fell in love with people and helping people. And before that, I, I, I kind of thought maybe I might go the direction of being like a counselor at one point. And I kind of found real early, like, well, this is a lot of what my job is like. And for me, the more like the why for me, I'm always trying to challenge myself to do things that are outside my comfort zone and and different. Like you'll see that I'll never stay you know, focused on the same thing. I love to set a goal that's within this, you know, health and fitness world and go after it. And I love to go after different boxes. Like everybody wants to put everybody in this, you know, oh, you're a sports performance guy. Oh, you're like a all natural hippie guy or, oh, you're, you know, this bodybuilder guy. Like, no, fuck that. Don't, you can't put me in a box because I'll jump out that box within a few months. Watch. So I'm always like, priding myself on that box. You know what I mean? That's right. (laughs) I'm always priding myself on, on challenging that. And what I, what I, I realized and I put together really early was, and this is getting to the why part of it is that as, as I continue to do that, I continue to grow and be a better trainer, a better human and healthier. And so it's like this double win for me. It's like, wow, the more I put myself out of the, out of my comfort zone and challenge myself in other avenues of health and fitness, I continue to to grow, expand my knowledge. I can speak on topics that a year or two before I wouldn't be able to speak on, and it just made me a, a better trainer, a better leader, a better communicator, 
And so a lot of my motivation for what I do in, when, in regards to lifting nutrition and working out is to be better at what I do for a living. And I really enjoy that. I really get a kick out of, and I'm right now, it's funny we bring this topic up right now. I'm, I have a couple things that I'm throwing around right now that I might start to focus on that's I've never done. It's totally out of my comfort zone and would challenge me physically and mentally. And, you know, I'm, uh, I've been really heavily focused on mobility for the last year and a half or so. And not to say like, I'm done with that and I'm moving on to something else, but you just entered for American Ninja Warrior. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yes. So, you know, I, I don't think there was a, a specific defining moment where it was like this aha for me. I think we're always, evolving and I'm always uh, finding the why and I'm always challenging myself to actually evaluate that because, you know, I, I remember when we had Erica Fit Love on the show and she talked about her why and she talked about that moment for her when she was sitting on the couch and she she told her child no, that she wasn't going to get up and play play with him because she felt so lazy. And that was like this huge moment for her that has now catapulted her to where she's at now. And I think every all fitness people have similar type stories of like something that maybe jump started you. But to me, that's like very that's still the, at the very beginning. Like you, that first motivator is normally a, a major insecurity that drove us to first get into it. Like we talk about on the show, you know, what drove me originally was okay. I was the skinny kid and I didn't like being skinny and I want to be more muscular. But that was the very beginning. I, I I feel I've evolved way beyond. You have to. If you don't, you'll you'll stop. Right. I mean, if you don't, you'll stop, or you'll get sick, or you'll hurt yourself. Right. Because right? guys in their mid thirties who still work out because they're insecure about being skinny have health problems now because they've been taking you know shit tons of gear and eating all these you know stuff all the time and you know going crazy. And we know these guys. We know them because I, I worked with a lot of these guys who right. were. Who just never evolved past that. And this is why I challenge people all the time that I meet, like when they, you know, swear by a workout, like, oh, I love Orange Theory. Oh, I love CrossFit. Oh, I love doing this. Oh, I love doing that. Like they have their thing that they love and that's all they do. And I'm like, that's great. You know, to each their own, man. If you love taking those classes or you love this modality of training, but really, man, you would really benefit by weaving in and out as many different modalities and learning about what each of them brings to you. And, you know, it's not about just finding the one, like I'd love to ever, like I love training, like all mobility type stuff right now. I love training to be a competitor. I love training like a power lifter. Like I love all those things. That's the idea is like you've, and you learn, you learn from each of these, you know, I mean, I remember years ago, I was going to go on vacation uh, somewhere that was sunny. And so I said, oh, I want to get, you know, lean and, and you know, uh, I want to look good for the beach or whatever. And it just, uh, at the time I was online and I'd always been fascinated by uh, strong men, strong men from, you know, like the turn of the century, you know, before even protein powder supplements, right? And uh, there was this website and I can't remember the name of the website. I wish I remember because I'd love to plug them. And I went on there and they had these books that were written by some of these old strong men. And for shits and giggles, I ordered one of them. I'm like, this is kind of cool. I want to see what this looks like. And I noticed that all of them trained their whole body frequently. And it kind of hit me. And I'm like, God, I wonder if I took my current workout and I just, instead of doing a body part a day, I just split. I, I did more frequently and did the same amount of volume for the week. And so what I did was I took my whole workout and I divided it in two. So now instead of hitting chest once a week, I was hitting it twice a week. 10 sets each time instead of 20 sets in one workout. And I'll never forget like being blown away <clears throat> by my body's progress. And every time I've made, you know, one of those leaps of faith, and it is a leap of faith because you get stuck, right? You get stuck in your little your little hamster wheel, like, and you're afraid. I don't want to stop 30 minutes of cardio every single day because the second I stop that, I'm going to get fatter. Or I don't want to stop doing my super heavy deadlifts once a week because if I stop that, then I'm going to lose muscle. Or if I don't, you know, if I stop squatting or if I stop Or you just justify it because it's working for you. Right. You know? and, and I like it. It works for me. I'm telling you, you will learn so much about your body by trying some of these different things. And this is what, that's kind of the law. That was one of the first things that led me towards, you know, looking at, you know, MAPS kind of programming which now, you know, obviously is far superior. And it's just it's just one of those things. I remember like the first time I used the foam roller, blew my fucking mind. Or the first time I tried intraset stretching or occlusion training mm-hmm. or all these different, you know, singles, doing heavy singles, sets of heavy singles, blew my mind. Like the first time I trained, you know, I'm like, you know what, why don't I try training See, like now a power lift I, I, I got to stop you right there. So here's some, this is where I think a lot of people make a mistake 
is, and this is where you're different because you have this mind, right, to be able to, to, be able to disseminate this information, mm-hmm. is most people get that experience. Like somebody introduces them to a modality, right? And they see results or they they have this like mind blowing experience like, holy shit, I've never felt this good. I've never been in this good shape. And they attach it to the modality or the thing and then they fucking marry that. And I don't care what it is, whether it be kettlebells, Olympic lifting, power lifting, CrossFit, Orange Theory, whatever it is, somebody at one point introduced them to this modality and it was far enough from what they were so used to that their body responded in such an amazing way that now they're sold on that's it. And then they get stuck. They get stuck in that area because that w- that's what showed them the most in their in their lifetime and in their experience of health and fitness. That gave them the most. And you t- trying to talk that person out of that is like, I know. good luck with that. Yeah. Good luck with telling the guy or girl who just got introduced to CrossFit and is in the well, best shape of their, their life. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, or they you just know. found it. You know. And I think I think too. Like I've always been I've always been the type that will go through like give it a chance like. I look at these modalities. I've tried them. I've tried the vibrating plate. You know, I've tried, uh, you know, yoga. I've tried like like different modalities and extracted, really paid attention to what things I would keep. You know, like as I'm going through the process, like, oh yeah, that's totally applicable. And then this is even CrossFit. Like, you know, I went through that. Oh, what what would I keep and what would I imp- completely eliminate? Right. You know. And we, we talked about this a long time ago. It's like, you know, deadlifts and, you know, it, they just brought the, all those like staple lifts back to popularity. Well, everything you just named, I can take a piece of that and tell you something that I, I think is great. A great takeaway from all of them, all the way down to kettlebells, mace bells, Indian clubs, you know, but pay, everybody has to, everybody likes to become in a camp and then they like to debate yeah. on why their way or well, their especially modality. Especially the skill ones. Well, I mean, you got like... The skill ones, it's there's so much like intricate detail that goes into like positionings with fingers and wrists and you know elbows and like in and from a macro movement perspective, you could get away with stuff, but like these people get into such like yeah, the micro lengthy details. details that like and then they get protective of that to where they'll talk shit about everybody that does it otherwise not pulling people in, which really irritates me. Well, you know, we forget like you look at you know children, right? Children play. That's how they're active. That's how they exercise. And we forget that uh, to play as adults. We just we forget. And yeah. really, working out you don't have to master it to to get involved. Let me tell you something. Like there's very few people that l- just love just to work out, right? Most people don't work out because they love working out. They work out because they have a particular goal. But I'm telling you, trying different things and approaching it with that mentality of learning it as a new skill and trying different things and just going in with an open mind, you will, you'll start to play with mm-hmm. your workouts. Like I look forward to my, the, for me, the side effects are the results that, that is the results are not my motivation for exercise anymore, or at least not my primary motivation. Of course, it's still part of it, but it's not my primary motivation. Now I go to the gym and I kind of have fun. In mm-hmm. fact, I have like two days a week where they're up for grabs. I go in the gym, I do what the fuck I want and I just go and play and have a good time. And I think people forget, you know, to do that. Like, you know, if I have a client, if I have, you know, clients that are coming to me and they want to lose weight and I know that there's a ma- there's something magical about swimming in a freezing lake at five o'clock in the morning for 20 minutes to make everybody lose weight, I'm still not going to recommend it because nobody's going to fucking do it because it fucking sucks for most people. And we forget, we forget that when you, that if you enjoy the process, you're far more likely to continue doing it. And so it's okay. Like a, a bad workout, I mean, as long as it's not hurting you and it's it's not horrible, but a, a routine that's not as good as another routine, but it's one that you enjoy and that you love to do is probably going to get you better results just because you're going to do it. You're going to do it more often. You're going to continue doing it. And if you approach exercise with that mentality of, wow, I'm going to learn this new skill or I'm going to try this different thing or I'm going to learn how to use a kettlebell properly and I'm going to start real slow and perfect it rather than I got to go to the gym and sweat and beat myself up. Mm -hmm. Totally different mentality, way more longevity. Like you're going to stay with your workouts and you know, you're talking like there's three guys right now in a podcast who've been exercising for, you know, decades and we, you know, have really kind of figured out that the secret really is enjoying it because at this point I would have stopped by now if I hated it. Well, learn to enjoy the process. Like I'll tell you the best, best advice I could give to somebody right now on, on this topic is 
if you've been doing whatever it is you're doing and you love it, like Sal's saying, that's important. But I'll tell you something right now. If you're doing something, you've been doing it for a long time and you love it, I'll tell you, you, you finding something that you're not good at and learning to love the process of getting good at it is going to show you way more change, growth than anything else. And and because it'll our- be it'll be a real like I, I think a lot of people who you know, like we've all known those people in the gym, right? They go to the gym, they do the exact same routine every time. Thirty minutes there, master, mm-hmm. same machine, same machine, yeah. same machine, go home. And they'll tell you they love the routine, but they don't know what they they actually don't realize if they, that if they, they don't knew, love it. If they, they don't love it, they're actually just it's just they're stuck to it. They're, it's, it's like, it's an like you know, when someone yeah. says that to me, it's like I they tell me when someone tells me they love their job, and I'm like, yeah, but if you knew that every day you were going to your job, they were paying you less, how much would you really love it? And that's what's happening when you go to the gym and you're doing this routine that you love yeah, so much. Yeah. You're getting Diminishing paid. Returns. You're getting paid less every time you continue to do that. The body is not an adaptation machine. It figures out what the fuck you're throwing at it really quick. You'd be surprised how efficient it is. So you being, being in this routine of loving to do that, well, you're loving to do that because in your head, you're like, oh, I'm exercising, I'm doing all this, I'm working. You're putting this this time in that you need to put in for this healthy body or to see results. When in reality, each time you go in with that mentality, you're getting paid less and less well, and less. So and I guess less. the moral of the story is change your why. Right? It'll, it's ever, ever evolving and let it evolve or, or maybe encourage it to evolve. There you go. All right, before we get to this next question, we have a few people we'd like to mention. So check this out. Uh, if you enter the code Mind Pump into these three companies, you'll actually get a discount. Big Top Beard Company is one of them for 33% off all of their products. You can also go to Chimera Coffee, Chimera and Coffee, both with a K, dot com, for 10% off their products. Or you can go to Brain.fm for 20% off. That's the meditation. Game changer. Yeah, so uh, just enter Mind Pump into these three companies, and we'll be adding more to these, and it'll probably always be the same code. Mind yeah, Pump. people often ask how they can support the show. Obviously, we have products that we sell, but this is another way to do it. We have some pretty cool sponsors now, including Audible, mm. the audio book Oh, that's company. how we listen to our books. Yeah, so if you go to uh, audibletrial.com forward slash Mind Pump, you can actually get a 30-day free trial with a free audio book. Excellent. Thanks, Doug. Bring on the next question. Yeah, burgers and buns. What natural products do you now use to replace chemical-filled products like deodorants, body wash, etc.? Okay, so why is it why say feminine hygiene? Because I wanted Doug to write that up there because I wanted to bring something interesting up that I was completely unaware of, and I, I hate you know I hate to say the reason I was aware of it is because I'm a man, but it's true. Obviously, I don't use feminine hygiene products like tampons and, and pads and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but you douche sometimes. Uh, but, uh, but so this was actually a conversation I had with uh, Stephanie, Stephanie Obergozo. And we were talking about, you know, like the products that we use on our bodies and some of the chemicals and stuff that are in them. And she brought up tampons. And she said to me, Sal, make sure your girlfriend buys organic tampons. And I kind of laughed because I'm like, organic tampons? Like, you don't eat tampons. <laughs> and then I thought about it. Yeah. And I'm like, holy like, shit. like a bamboo strip? And so, no, hey, so she don't. explained to me, she goes, look, the cotton that they use in tampons is regulated as a textile. So if you were using it as, as an ingestible, it's regulated differently. You know, food is regulated differently and more stringently than things that are textile. So cotton, because you grow it, they can spray the fuck out of it with pesticide if it's being used as for tampons or clothes. Mm. They can spray the fuck out of them. One of the most, one of the parts of the body that absorbs uh, the most. Probably the inside uh, of your vagina. Yeah. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. And so th- there's been uh, some loose studies that have connected uh, these some of these products to no things No pun like, intended there? Yeah. A little pesticide <laughs> penetration. Yeah, yeah. To uh, like, you know, things like fibroids, uh, you know, ovarian cancers, uh, issues with hormonal issues and, and the like from, you know, some of these products. So- she said, "Use organic feminine hygiene products." Um, I extend that to deodorants and body washes. Um, you know, when you consider and look, here's the deal: Are they safe? Sure, but uh, think about how often you use. For example, use deodorant. Think yeah. about how often you use deodorant and how long you use deodorant for. So you probably started using deodorant right around puberty, right? Because that's right, right around the, the time you start to smell. So if you're a boy, probably 12, 13 years old, and you'll probably keep using deodorant. Likely until the age you you know till the day you die, right? So let's say you live to you know eighty years old. That's a lot of years that you're putting deodorant under your arms. And if it's antiperspirant, it's probably got aluminum in it. And aluminum has been connected to 
dementia, Alzheimer's, and issues of the brain. And if you think you're not you, you're not absorbing some of that through the skin, you're crazy. Your skin is not, uh, you know, it's definitely permeable, and things do go into your body. Um, body washes and soaps yeah. with lots of perfumes and whatnot. A lot of these chemicals are, are weak xenoestrogens, meaning that they they bind to estrogen receptors very weakly. So it's not like you'll 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 they'll bind to the receptor and then you'll get this crazy estrogen response. But uh, they will express some type of a, a you know a, a reaction or an affinity to these receptors. And again, over decades, it's not out of the realm of you know uh, it's it's not crazy to suggest that you may have some long term effects, especially cumulative effects. And when you add all these products up, so well, this that's something to consider. This person's asking, what natural products do you use to replace these? So, do you have a list uh, yeah, of so for products de- that you use? Yeah, so for deodorant, I use uh, oh God, what's the name of it? Actually, it's in my bag. It's called oh Primal Paste. Maybe we can put a sh- in the show notes. Let's get a little link there up for it. Primal mm. Paste is the one I use. The main ingredients are baking soda, coconut oil, and a few other natural ingredients. And that's actually pretty effective. Uh, I started using that one uh, relatively recently. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Uh, you can actually come over and smell me. And we'll, we'll actually, no, we'll do an Insta story. Yeah. Whatever he was using before. Just put his arm around you yeah. for a minute and Here's, see how long you what last. Else? What else you got, stink boy? You know, uh, for body wash, I use just basic, uh, very, very basic clean soaps. I can't remember the, the brands, but they're just... Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing, um, no, no, no dye, colors or no, co- yeah. no, no colors, no dyes and that kind of stuff in them. Uh, toothpaste, um, I use, there's a, a brand called Tom's, um, and they make a pretty good, uh, toothpaste that I'll use. You just use like powder. I'm going to start, see, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start using baking soda to, br- yeah. to brush my teeth. You just get a little bit of baking soda, dip your toothbrush in it, psh, use that, boom, you're set. It's, it works excellent. Um, the one thing I have not switched over yet is what I put in my hair because I have not found a natural thing that looks okay in my hair. A lot of times I don't put anything in my hair, but sometimes what I do. What do you mean? You there's, all kinds of, there's all kinds of organic shampoos. I haven't found... Oh, no, no, not shampoos. I'm talking oh. about like the wax. Yeah, yeah. Oh, to style your hair. Yeah, to style my oh, hair. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I no, I use, I use I like natural palm organic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, you know... <clears throat> God, when we get on this topic right here, this is... How do I say this without bashing all the hippie shit? Um, to me, it's it's like you have you have big rocks that you have to take care of first. And I think there's a lot of things that we, we don't realize on a daily basis that we, we take in, uh, and we digest. Yeah. You almost um, need like a chemical checklist. You know? Yeah. Right. right. And, and I, like and I think them all off. I, I like talking about this because I think, uh, it's important. The awareness is important, right? That you're aware of that. Don't think just cause you're putting this stuff on your skin, that your skin isn't absorbing some of it and getting some of it too. I I find it ironic though when some people tend to, you know, do all these crazy things, but then their their diet is like shit. You know what I'm saying? Like and nothing's gonna kill you faster than, you know, having a, a poor diet than the you know, the these these chemicals that you're probably getting in your deodorant, I don't see you killing you if you're over consuming calories and fucking garbage like in your diet and processed foods and you know, for me like it's like Okay, I, I had four or five diet sodas this last week. Like to me, I should probably fix that before I, I run out and worry about getting all these different shampoos and uh, body washes and stop doing this and stop doing that. Now that being said, you know, because I'm aware of this and I want to, you know, be cautious of how much of that is. I'm a guy who likes to shower like three times a day, literally. So I'm not scrubbing my body and I'm not washing my hair three times a day. In fact, I only wash my hair and use shampoo, which I use. I, there's an or I have an organic shampoo and stuff that I use. Same thing with a bar of soap. And I, I only lather up once a day, if that, and I use the shampoo in my hair probably every three days. And then my toothpaste is Tom. So there's little things that I've done to, uh, I think, make a conscious effort, but I also don't stress about stress about that because I feel like there's other areas in my life that need so much more. Like I think I need more sunlight. Like I think I need things that bring down my stress. I think I need better sleep. Like I think things like that, I need way more attention than, you know, running out and paying double the price for a lot of these products. I think if you look at the products, we could probably name the the biggest offenders. 
And for women, I hate to say this, the biggest offenders for you are probably be, makeup. Uh, well, and your and what you use to color your hair. Uh, the chem the chemicals they use to color hair. It's funny too because you'll see all these like super like health conscious hippie girls, and then I'll tell them, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't use. They the got chem- purple hair. And that's shit, the right? that's the one thing they won't change. Right? Is, is that you know? And I know I get it. I get it if it really bothers you, but definitely the the chemicals they put in your hair and your scalp is one of the big offenders. Um, deodorant can be, I think, uh, you know, one of the, one of the bigger ones, um, sunscreen, that's a big offender. Mm. Sunscreen is something you really want to change. So if you're, if you had to make a list of, of priorities of things you're going to change, sunscreen will be one of the first ones. What the, are your options? I mean, cause like somebody like me, <laughs> you know, I don't want to fry like zinc oxide. And, yeah. Y- use zinc oxide. So like a lobster. Yeah. So, uh, the, the, the chemical based, so sunscreens work one of two ways. Either they absorb the UV rays and scatter them so that they don't go into your skin or they reflect the yeah. sun. Okay. The chemical-based ones absorb uh, the rays, and those are the ones that have the long chemical names I can't pronounce. One of them's oxa. Are so you something, talking something. about those dorky zinc where you put it like all over? <laughs> yeah, right. So dude, they make look them- like a fucking clown. So- <laughs> <laughs> That's my option. No, dude? come on. So, man. so listen, they make some- or wear a sweater, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they make some. So you make those- mid-July, bro. No, I'll give you an answer that's that's valid. You, they have like they have these these uh, uh, like shirts and everything you can wear now. That um, you can actually go into the sun and like uh, for kids especially too like you can go into the water and all this stuff and it, and it has UV protection and all that. So that's probably have... the best thing. Yeah. But what I was gonna say is the zinc oxide ones you can buy them. They're not pure white, uh, uh, Justin. Okay. You put them on. They rub in. In the sun, out of the water, you'll see a little bit of a white sheen. Not a lot. It's not like the old school, you know, lifeguard ones where they put the white on the nose. It's yeah. not that. <laughs> You, you rub it in, and it, if I had it it's, on right it's now... It's cool because it's retro. Yeah, yeah, no, if I had it on all over my body, you wouldn't really be able to tell, but if I got in and out of the water, you could kind of tell a little bit, but yeah. it doesn't look bad. Um, it's not... You don't want to get the nano the nano uh, particulized ones because what they'll do is they'll make the zinc oxide particle so small so that you can rub it in, but then you just absorb too much zinc, which so then it, that's bad for you. But the zinc oxide, titanium oxide sunscreens, those are great. Use those because the other sunscreens are for sure endocrine uh, disruptors. For sure, they affect your hormones. And I, uh, you know, if you're an adult and you use them every once in a while, not a big deal. I don't use them on my kids, that's for sure, because kids are developing and you're putting all these the sunscreen on them and uh, it could cause issues with their hormones. And also consider this when it comes to the sun. Of course, there's people like Justin and, you know, you and your kids who guys are, you know, blinding white. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but the if you're transparent family, if <laughs> your skin starts to adapt over, over time, you don't want to get a sunburn. That's for sure. But if your skin is adapted where you can go in the sun and you just get darker and you don't get a sunburn, like that's okay. It's actually good for you to be able to do that. It's the burn you want to avoid. Well, I was just going to say, now where 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 do you take the lesser evil here, right? Where it's like, okay, Justin's out on the boardwalk this weekend. He forgot to get right. his fucking zinc oxide wipe that you want him to use. Yeah, I just sprayed And he has, he has a choice right now. Okay, do I just not put anything on my skin or do I protect it and not get burned? Then you're probably better off with the chemical-based uh, sunscreen and because burning your skin is for sure bad. And then if you look at someone like Justin, probably like me too, like I could count on definitely one hand, probably less than three times in a year, there might be a chance that I actually apply something like that to my skin. You know, how, are, are we really doing that much damage? Am I doing, you know what I'm saying? Like that's where, that's what I meant by like the bigger rocks. Well, where, some people with sunscreen will put on sunscreen. Right. And, and, and it's and in, they, it's and in you, makeup. It's in chapstick. Like you'll look at chapstick, sunscreen. You look at makeup, it oh, blocks if it's the sun. chronic for sure, yeah. Dude, a lot of people yeah, wear that, that shit every day because they've yeah. been led to believe that it keeps them right. healthier, it's better for the skin. Here's what happens when you block a lot of the fucking sun all the time. You get low vitamin D levels, which by the way is an ep- is becoming an epidemic. A lot of people have low D levels and you know what's going to raise your, your cancer risk more uh, more than the sun will? Yeah, low low D. vitamin D levels. Right. Yeah. In fact, in, in uh, they've had these uh, campaigns in some countries where they're really pushing sunscreen, like in Australia. Mm. There's huge, huge like sunscreen campaign because at the time the ozone layer was deteriorating and mm. you know people were getting skin cancer. So this is what I mean and, by and other it's cancer scare to sell pro- it, it it reminds me a lot too of like when we had this like total scare of like the um 
the antibacterial, you know, yes. soap on hand, like everywhere. There's like a little station where I gotta, oh, I gotta put my right. antibacterial stuff on, you know, because I'm afraid of germs, and you know, and now we're just like adding a shit ton of chemicals all over us. So this is where this, good back, this is where I feel like just the awareness piece is what's important. And I'll tell you something that like why I even use like organic soap, and I went through my whole little spiel of how I utilize it is because I have psoriasis. And I actually was, I used to use a loofah and fucking antibacterial soap and I would scrub myself oh, wow. three times a day, you know? So talk about like irritating that skin and doing that and not knowing, not knowing. And I'm in my head, I'm you thinking- You think you're doing good. Yeah. You yeah. think you're doing good. Right. And, and, and so for me, like that was a, the major transition, right? Was, okay, I'm aware that I already shower a lot as it is. And then on top of that, I was using a loofah. And then on top of that, I'm using this soap that's like that. Okay. Probably not a good idea, especially if I have sensitive skin like psoriasis, right? So for me, that that's the big thing. It's not like, oh, I'm doing this because I'm afraid I'm getting so much aluminum inside my body that could put, turn potentially cancerous later. Because I think when people talk like that, it's kind of ridiculous if you're not doing all the other things. It's like you're doing all these other things. It's going to kill you a lot faster than your deodorant is. If but, you own a loofah, your shower game tight. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I, but I if, you, if you're if you someone like me who was doing that and I was actually being really uh, counterproductive to an issue that I had, you know, wising up to that. And like you brought up the sunscreen, I think that's really important if you're somebody who piles on makeup all day you've got chemicals you're you're dying your hair constantly all the time and then on top of that you're lo- you're you know globbing all this shit on your skin before you go out in the sun and you're and you live somewhere where you're out in the sun all the time so you're constantly putting that on like these these people like maybe it's just it's just pay attention a little bit here's the thing that i want to I, I we have to consider the following like i think we've we've really started to uh we accepted and it's false we've accepted the false narrative that a lot of the stuff that happens to us is just because we have it's our genetics like autoimmune disease is everywhere oh i must have bad genes or look at these people who have cancer at the age of 30 and 40 oh they must have had bad genes like i'm sorry i don't buy that shit i just don't well you can't you can't buy it when over 50 years ago that wasn't happening well not only that there's something happening different now than i mean that's a that we you we had bad genetics and good genetics 50 years ago so why are we having so much cancer and stuff going on now i just i just don't buy i mean i definitely buy that there are cases where that happens but we're learning about epigenetics now we're we're noticing massive trends in certain things like food allergies and stuff and it's like, no, it's not fucking genetics. There's something that we're doing, and it's probably not one thing. That's the thing you got to consider. Like, it's not one culprit. Like, oh, here it is. It's deodorant, or here it is. It's sugar, or it's it's probably all these things yeah. added up. Yes. And so, I mean, you know, well, Adam that's makes when a- all these like functional medicine practitioners. They're they're they have a job because it's like. It's such a a maze that they have to go back and kind of figure out like what you've been exposed to, like what product here, you know, you might be using chronically and then, you know, the elimination diet and like, what, what do we see as we reintroduce these things? And, you know, there's a lot of self-assessment that needs to happen in order to figure out the root of all, you know, this, this systemic problem. And it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to tackle. I mean, if you're a person who grew up using these products, eating these foods, and had no problems, right? And now you're an adult, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got horrible digestive issues or skin issues or rheumatoid arthritis popped up or some other autoimmune issue or something like that, right, pops up. And you go see somebody who's a functional, you know, medicine doctor or even just somebody who's, you know, into this, and they tell you, hey, you know, stop using these products and stop eating this way. And you're in your mind... You're thinking, well, fuck, I've been using forever. They never bothered me before. It's got to be something else. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to, and not only that, but without realizing it, you don't want to buy into it because you have to change everything. That sucks. Like who wants to change the way that they've lived for, you know, the last, you know, 15 to 20 years, but you got to examine it all. You got to look at it all. And I was just talking to my friends about this yesterday. I had some friends over, uh, uh, some old clients of mine. Do you have other friends? And I do. And uh, two more, two other friends. That's it. Whatever. Anyway, we're hanging out, and my, me and my buddy Morgan, we're talking about this, and he goes, "You know, he goes, we probably grew up at the worst time, because when we grew up in the '80s, right, early '80s uh, up, up until now, this is when like processed foods went through the roof, like exploded, right? Processed foods just exploded, the, covered the market. '60s, '70s, and '80s, it went nuts. This is when glyphosate hit the market, like in the '90s." 
this is when you know you know things just got mass produced and our parents just fed us and oh antibiotics were cra- you, you got prescribed antibiotics for everything everything like if you went to the, the doctor, microwave came TV TV <laughs> yeah, dinners yeah. that whole trend right like it just it's it all just, hormones and in, in cows and you know antibiotics it and just all that. it was yeah. a free for all like I, I when I was a kid and I went to the doctor if I had a cough that lasted for three days the doctor just gave me antibiotics it wasn't a big deal like they gave them out like candy right. Uh, all the food we ate, like soda, was a staple yeah. in every single American uh, dinner. Right. It, Stay it away was, from fat, and, and everybody. It, and it was just it was. We grew up at the worst time, and I, I think it's it's starting to change now. You're starting to see. Do lots you know of that's changes. why it's so fun? I find it really funny when. Um, so we still probably one of the biggest debated you know uh, podcast episodes we've done yet. It was the Lane Norton episode because we have a different opinion with a lot of this stuff, right? Because. A lot of this science is still coming out and this whole like, oh, uh, it's correlation. We can't prove this yet. And it's funny because the people that tend to lean towards his side, very rarely is it somebody who's older than 35 years old. Mm -hmm. It's always the 20 year olds or younger that kind of like tend to lean on his this side because they because they're like fine yeah. yeah they're fine yeah. right they're like and they and they want to justify you know kicking ass in my and i feel house. bad because i get it dude i was yeah. i was fucking right with you in that group too until all this shit started hitting me and then it made and then it forces you to look deeper into it and then you start going like yeah. fuck it takes a okay. couple decades for it all to start it, it doesn't happen know, overnight and it's way it, through it does i guarantee you they're gonna look back at you know the 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 end of the 20th century and, you know, maybe a hundred years from now, and they're going to look back and be like, oh, like the way we look at like cigarettes, you know, way back when, when, when they were coming out with studies saying tobacco doesn't hurt you and shit like that. And you'd see doctors and pregnant moms and everybody smoking and you're like, no big deal. You know, yeah. now we're like, oh my God, yeah, I can't believe you used to do that. <laughs> I bet they're going to come, they're going to look back and be like, wow, I can't believe you guys ate that shit and used those yeah. products as much as you did. You like that's all your babies. You like know, that's, did you know, Coca, you know, Coca-Cola? Uh, is obviously one of the biggest brands in the world, right? They've seen sales drop now for I don't know how many years in a row. Like it's starting to change. Things are starting to shift a little bit, and I th- I don't think they're anywhere near where they need to be. But I think by my the time my kids have their kids, when you go to the grocery store and you go to the market and stuff like that, a lot of the shit's going to be weeded out. I really believe that. I really, yeah. really do. Because the really young generation right now that's coming up, why? Like their their awareness of it is different. You know, you see these young kids challenging. You know, people that are saying that used to be the norm. It's that in between right now. If you were part of X or the millennial kind of range right now, you're still right in the thick of it. You're right in the thick of it. You're not quite old enough to where some of this shit's caught up to you yet. Maybe some have, though. I mean, I have met some 25 because it shit started hitting me around 27, like 25, 27. Yeah, it was in late 20s for me. Yeah, late 20s was when I started. And you got to think, I was probably a a major offender compared to most people. I mean, I'm sucking down Cokes. I'm doing two, three protein bars and shakes. I'm doing all the different supplements with all the different flavors. I'm doing speed stacks a day. So I know I was like, I'm throttling down compared to probably the average person. So I know it probably came faster to me than it will a lot of other people but you better believe if you just ignore that shit and say oh it ain't a big deal it'll it'll, catch up yeah yeah. it'll it'll come around so they wear to me the awareness of all this stuff is the most important piece Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i think there's there's bigger rocks for a lot of people like that's why i don't like to become so like oh don't do this this you know all this because then people think like oh god the whole the whole hippie talk right it's not you don't want you just don't want to turn everybody off or focus you don't want people to focus on like the smaller things. Yeah. Like if you're if you're like if you're, you know, poisoning your body with food every day and over consuming, not exercising, tons of stress in your life. Like let's let's be honest. Let's all let's all agree on that, right? Like that type of shit is going to affect your your overall health. More Yeah, than, if it was a pie chart, like that's 90 something percent of everything right there. Yeah, right? Yeah. But I mean, along the way, you should definitely be aware of some of these things, especially if you're a major offender. For sure. Next question is from Z Raslin. Where do you guys stand on the FST7 training model for natural athletes? <laughs> what the hell is that? That's Hani Rambod's uh, workout program, right? Uh, we're, we're, putting ju- we're putting on Justin next week. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, you're going to start doing this workout. Cool. Dude. It's I can't fu- wait. It's brilliant fucking uh, science-based you know program. What? You know what? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we brought this yeah, up a little bit FST. because we, we talked a little bit you about know, he's a, you know, By the way, you know Hani's a local guy, right? Yeah, he is. He's, he's, he's in the, he's in the okay. San Jose. Well, he used to come get massages at your place, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I saw him come down come down a few times. You know FS in the FST or, or, or excuse me, you know what FST stands for? Fascia training? Fascia stretch training. Oh, stretch training. Yeah, so stretch training. here's the theory behind it. Before, actually, yeah, we're just going to rip it. So 
the theory behind it is you the fa- the fascia is Pro- one of the limiting factors to muscle growth, right? And so part of this training is to stretch the fascia so that muscles have more room to grow. And the way they do it is by maximizing the pump and stretching the, the fascia from the inside. Can I tell you how stupid that is for a second? Oh yeah, please tell <laughs> me. Anybody understands fa- fascia is like fucking plastic. No, it's hard. It's 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 like a fibrous. Like it's, you ain't stretching. It's that like shit. plastic. Yeah. It's literally like the closest thing that that we handle on a daily basis. That's like fascia is like fucking plastic. So if you can imagine flexing your bicep, if someone took a if someone took something and wrapped it around your bicep, and then you you mm. pumped your biceps up to think that you're going to stretch and shape the fascia from a pump. Well, and you going through Eldoa, Sal, like getting into those like very unique positions and to even get them to un- unravel. What you're doing in- with Eldoa is you're creating lines of tension. Different. You're, you're not stretching... You're not going to do shit to your fucking fascia. It's not going to happen. Not you're to not going to stretch that, it. You're not, not going to. You're getting it. more into a more neurological thing. You're connecting your body. You're getting reconnected to muscles that are responsible for taking those lines into yeah. optimal full range of motion. Where right. stretching fascia through a pump is probably one of the stupidest things ever. Which is why when we first talked about this way back when, when he first came out with it, this is also why I have kind of a chip on my shoulder about the dude. The fact that he gets to train the rock just just <laughs> totally makes me mad. It makes me yeah. I love the rock so much. I would love to get a hold of him and the fact that this guy gets to train him because he has he has Mr. Olympia for men's physique, women's bikini and for bodybuilding. All of a sudden the dude gets credit like he's got a great training. No. The training program is not revolutionary. There is nothing well, special I, about it. I'll break it. it down for you right now. This is what it is. Okay, you ready? You do your, it's, let's pretend we're doing FST for my biceps. I do my regular bicep workout, and then at the end of my bicep workout, I pick an exercise like barbell curls, and I do like 12 to 15 reps for seven sets with like 20, 30 set reckon, uh, second uh, rest in between. So that's it. All I'm doing is I'm doing seven sets of an exercise at the end to try and get a, as big of a pump as I possibly can. That's where the seven the comes finishers. in. That's it. That's the fucking yeah, training model. What can I say? Okay, so and I know people are probably listening right now, thinking like, "Oh, you're such a hater." Like, it sound like, and I should have no preface. No, if it, it was a great it. fucking program, I'd say. Well, it's, stupid. It, it's yeah, and I hate what I don't like is when people take a little bit of science where most people are just have that doesn't make sense to them, right? It's like yeah. beyond them. So it, he's they just go, taking like buzz terms. Exactly. Like you take you take some buzz terms right now. Hypertrophy plan. Fa- right. Fascia training, training the lines, Aldoa, all this stuff is very popular right now because we're learning. It. This is this this is in my wheelhouse because this is something that in the last like three four years I've read a lot about and I'm very intrigued by fascia. I'm I'm intrigued because as humans we're intrigued because we know very little. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got people talking about possibly storing memory inside fascia. You're talking about being able to move these lines to increase mobility you're saying people are starting to say like oh if you can increase the lines you can maybe increase more muscle there's a lot of stuff going on that now because of that you get people that will take it take a little piece of it yeah. it reminds and- me a lot of uh, anabolic fasting yeah, uh, as an example, <laughs> yeah, you, another stupid, another great example, another great example of taking a great buzz term or something that's popular that we're learning about that's confusing for the masses. Most people have no understanding of what fascia is inside your body, how it works, and how that could have anything to do with you building muscle. So they take something, they try and make it sound really fucking confusing and technical and smart. And then they wrap a program around it, which is nothing scientific about it whatsoever. Chasing a pump and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, we've known for a very long time what that does. And that's literally all you... You know what that is? Phase three of MAPS Black. Yeah. (laughs) your whole program. The whole program is phase three of MAPS Black, which... I'm not saying that there's not a good piece to that. There's tr- the, the, the training program. No, the, the pump yeah. itself definitely uh, elicits growth. It elicits growth in all the, uh, the non-muscle fiber structures within muscle. And it also stimulates muscle fiber growth as well. The, the pump is an important part of muscle building. It's not the only part. It's not the part you want to focus all your time on. Uh, it's, it's something that should be phased in and out. But there's literally zero... Nothing revolutionary about FST seven. It is, it's it's nothing. It's literally nothing. It's seven sets of a fucking exercise at the end to get a better pump. That's it. There's, there's nothing behind it. You watch the training with his athletes. You watch the workouts. There's nothing different about it. It's I think it's just someone who got, who's connected, who trains these people, sponsors them with a supplement company, and says, hey, let's I'm going to be your trainer. Take pictures and video, and then people think I am you know some you know some some of the people that I mean. 
good programming. If you if you're looking for good programming, I think some of the better people are like in powerlifting, powerlifting, Oli- powerlifting sure. Olympic lifting, like Westside Barbell. Yes, Westside yeah. Barbell. Shout out to those guys over there. I mean, when you're doing something like that, like that requires good programming, you can't just get by with chasing a pump and calling it a good workout because your your arms burn or your bu- you got a bunch of blood pumped in there, so you think it's a great workout, like. Now, there's so much more to uh, training a, a power lifter, an Olympic lifter. You want to find guys that are putting together programs like you look that You direction. know what's sad is that bodybuilding, of all the strength sports, and I'll con- we'll consider bodybuilding a strength sport because they lift weights, right? Of all the strength sports I can, th- I can think about, bodybuilding uh, pl- put, probably puts the least amount of, uh, I guess, effort into scientific training. Mm-hmm. I hate to say it. It's fucking true. Like bodybuilders, they work out. But they don't like approach their training like an Olympic lifter or a power lifter or a strongman or any other strength athlete. It's in bodybuilding, you know where they place most of their, and I'm talking about pro bodybuilding, you know where they place most of their effort in science? The drugs. Yeah. The drugs and diet. That's when they're really trying to like mirror, like match their insulin and the growth hormone Double to their diet D. and their, but when it comes to their training, like you look at pro bodybuilders' routines, and I could switch them around. It looks the fucking same. There's nothing. Well, and let's just, it, let's, just, it hasn't been that way for a long time. And let's time. be honest here, right? So if you were to look at it like a pie chart, like we were talking about in the last question, like, okay, when you talk about diet and the drugs, that takes up a good 80%, okay? So if you've got the best drugs and you've got the best diet- And great genetics. Yeah, and you're, and yeah exactly. 80%. Chances are you're going to be pretty fucking good. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be really good if you got those things going for you. Now, if you don't have the drugs, you don't have the genetics, and you're doing pretty decent at the diet, you know, this is where programming really makes a big difference for somebody. Somebody who's all who's all natural, who doesn't have superior genetics, they put some good program behind them. Now it makes a big difference. But those guys, when you're when you're running that stuff, yeah, I can get away with some decent programming or half-ass programming. And the FST seven with his his question is for a natural athlete like, no, I I don't think any of us think it's good for a natural. I don't think it's good for a guy who's on anabolics just because he's got guys out there that are the pro and they're winning. I'll tell you right now, the nutrition, the drugs, and the genetics play the biggest role in those guys being that way. Just don't don't be fooled. Most of those dudes before they hired or started doing FST seven looked pretty fucking damn yeah. good before that. <laughs> it might be one of those cases of cherry picking the top oh, guy. And that's saying, what no, I would, they wouldn't do that. Come on, it's what I would do. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, and that's just smart business. It's like, yeah, hey, I'm gonna like go the before and after. You know, you take a picture. Oh, and Jesus, you feed dude. them a lot. You know, give me the next one, Doug. Before I get that more never happens. All right, our next one is from our boy Mind Pump Danny. What's up, Danny? So if you guys are stuck on an island. You have to choose three foods, one tool, and one partner. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm glad I didn't say we had to fuck. You That's know. easy for me. What? Right there. Uh, egg, steak, avocado. Those are my three foods. My one tool is a hatchet, and my partner would be my girl. Mm. That was easy for me. <laughs> that was that was really steak, easy egg, and avocado. For sure, I could live off of that. I, I, we get because you get most of what I need to there. Mm. One tool. Hatchet has to be it, right? You knock down tree. I would say matches, but I think the hatchet would help me too because I got to kill a bear or kill something or possibly kill my partner if she drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> or if you ran out of food. Yeah, yeah I got to eat her. <laughs> you got to eat her, eat her leg. Which well, is also why I'd want someone weaker than me living with that it says my partner because I got to eat them. <laughs> I can't get, I can't have like a partner who's bigger and stronger than me or else I become the prey. Dude, I want pizza, Mexican food. <laughs> oh my god. And like, I don't know, cookies. Cuz you know, let's be unreasonable about this. I'm stuck on an island. I'm burning a shit ton of calories. Fair enough. I don't even give a shit, you know? Like <laughs> give me an axe, you know, just to chop up my uh, the trees surrounding so I could make a, a killer fort or whatever, a nice little house. And then, uh, <laughs> I mean, like, w- w- my wife, of course. I mean, what, what am I supposed to say? That? Yeah, I, I'm yeah. like, I hope Sal picks somebody Partner. different to be different. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, so, geez, what would I pick for three foods? Part of me is like, pick the foods that are going to be the most nutritious yeah, let's be and like, benefit you. Um, uh, I, I know, did, fitnessy I, I did about already, it. Right? Yeah, so I think like eggs probably would be one of them. Uh, Coconut oil or or coconut, just coconuts themselves, unless they grow on the island, would be another one. And maybe some kind of a citrus fruit so I can get oh, my Oh, sorry. I need C. whiskey. Yeah. My bad. I, uh, I scratch. Yeah. Scratch, <laughs> one scratch, your Mexican scratch one of those Scratch one of those out for whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm good. My tool, uh, a fishing pole. I'd want a fishing. If I'm on an island, uh, I would want that bad, fishing pole. Bad decision right there. Why? Bro. Because we have food? Because the food's unlimited? You could, you could make a fishing pole. Yeah. 
You, with your hatchet, you can go carve a fucking. You make it sound like. And you, you can do you know how to make a fishing pole. <laughs> I can make a spear. You, have you ever got? Uh, you ever tried to spear a fish? I would uh, figure it out if it was water. survival, bro. But I, I got to figure it out. I think you'd starve. Oh, yeah. That's good. You <laughs> and, might want like a flint though, you know, to start a fire. Yeah, a lot maybe easier. matches, huh? Yeah. Something like That's that. why matches originally I said that too. But I'm oh like, no, here's yeah. my tool, my cell phone. With reception. <laughs> so, with I, reception. So I can Google just, shit. Yeah. And call people to come save me. Yeah. Partner, yeah. Uh, I would. I don't know who this person is, but whoever, I would look at all my friends and family and the most oh, well-versed like, person in uh, like wilderness survival. That's probably a good call, yeah. right? I love my girl and all, but I, it'd probably be more advantageous. Because yeah, I, we, might, to, we might kill each other yeah. Yeah, <laughs> trying to figure out how we're going to get out of there. I'd be useless. Like I would need somebody who knows how to like survive. On a deserted island. That's fair. Yeah, mm. so. Smart strategy I'll take there. Bear Grylls. That's it. How about that? I like that. Yeah. Excellent. Like Ben Greenfield. I'll call Ben up. Oh, yeah, you got Fuck. Ben. I feel, ben oh, Greenfield. Man, that's a great that's call. Ben Greenfield. That's my, I'm, oh, taking, that's I'm taking it, call. yeah. I already called it. He's coming damn on my it. island. You guys got to find somebody Fine. else. Fine. <laughs> God damn it. Mm. Check it out. Go to mindpumpmedia.com. 30 days of coaching is still available for free. And uh, we changed it. So now when you, when you enroll in it, you get all 30 days at once. So you can go through it. You can... Learn about which subject you want to. Listen to whichever episodes you want to. It's pretty awesome. Also, find us on Instagram. We've been doing some cool stuff with our Insta stories. We answer questions on our Instagrams. Uh, we've got we provide different fitness information you may not hear on our podcast. Now you can find my personal page at Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Justin's at Mind Pump Justin. And believe it or not, Doug has an Instagram also. It's at Mind Pump Doug. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>